and O crate, uh, testing out the changes to uh, my Vitality Totem build, dual Vitality Totems. Uh, it's not what I expected. But it's not necessarily bad either. So now I'm able to cast um, two storm totems. Actually, theoretically, I can cast three, but uh, practically, you can cast two. But the um, basically the damage numbers have been reduced by approximately a third. Oh, sorry, approximately two thirds. I'm doing basically uh, two thirds less damage than I was doing per cast uh, before this latest patch for the balancing pass. So it sort of works out, but not exactly. Basically, I've, I've suffered a, roughly a, a third of a, a third of the original damage I've suffered as a nerf. But as you can see, it's still relatively effective, especially uh, being able to cast two. And uh, that helps to keep the uh, gameplay rolling along a bit. Actually, you have to use a bit of timing, a bit more timing and, and uh, forethought. Keep it all happening to keep it, to keep it fluid and smooth. Otherwise, you can just start running around, casting away, and. Um, so you get on yourself, the build becomes uh, quite unstable, if I can put it that way. Well, the, the, the way the gameplay feels is unstable, I should say. So definitely noticing a decrease in your damage, but the build feels a lot busier now too. And obviously, um, I mean, this build, this is the same character that I had before, I haven't changed anything. Um, it was looking at stacking vitality damage, obviously. And uh, they have done a reasonable job of that. But this build will also, will also benefit from uh, stacking cooldown reduction. Obviously you'll lose out on the vitality damage, but you should be able to run three storm totems in. Vitality damage storm totems together with the Wendigo totem. So you can see it's not, it's nowhere near as restrictive like mine was um, saying. He felt that it was way too restrictive and it slowed him down because of the long um, cooldown. Now with a shorter cooldown you can actually, you've got more casting options. And the fact that you've allowed us to, you, to uh, stack the totems as well is pretty cool. It does give us more, more casting options so you're not seeing as many um, AI seems slightly improved as well, so you're not seeing as many ranged mobs left behind. I 
certainly not for as long anyway. So yeah, you can see the whole build um, plays a lot busier, even just with the totems and um, Curse of Frailty, which was how I built it before. I didn't want it. I didn't want it as busy as the way Nine built it. Um, there's a lot of there's a fair bit of micromanaging in that build, and even though he was getting um, it allowed me to get better damage. Um, I just felt like it was too too busy for my tastes anyway. This is probably busy enough. You can see there's a fair bit of shit going on here. Especially if I uh, get in amongst them, if I start getting a bit wayward with the way I um, distribute the totems and uh, start running around. push forward. I'm not really doing enough damage at the moment where I can um, push forward, where I can keep the momentum going. It's, uh, if I push forward too far I end up putting myself in a situation where I could possibly die. Although you can see the Wendigo totem is uh, helping me out considerably. Once you get used to its mechanic, it's uh, quite, quite a useful piece of gear. Sort of the mobs have thinned out a bit, so now the, the totem casting is um, slowing down or slowing me down the rate that I can cast them at. So this build actually works better when there's quite a few mobs around. see I'm not, I'm not really playing it um, particularly tactically like hiding, casting into doorways and drawing mobs toward me and that sort of thing. I'm playing fairly fast and loose and um, still making reasonable progress. It still feels fairly satisfying. So that's a good thing about the Wendigo, if you need healing you just go and I mean, it, me it means that you do have to put yourself a little bit into harm's way but you can go and find the biggest group of mobs and cast it right at them and run in close to get the healing aura and uh, suddenly you've pretty much restored the full health. Just thought I'd post that bit of gameplay for you. Um, you can see uh, what the changes have wrought. My final feelings about it, I feel that uh, individual totem damage could be slightly higher, maybe uh, 5 to 10 percent, but all in all the ability to cast um, two totems effectively, theoretically you can cast three, and obviously, if you can get cooldown reduction, you're going to lose out on um, you're going to lose out on vitality damage, but you're going to be able to get you're going to be able to get more effectively get that third totem out. So I think with cooldown reduction, I think uh, the build will actually play a lot smoother too, sort of like my Banff build um, with a decent amount of cooldown reduction. That 
build plays incredibly smooth for what it is. Uh, extremely enjoyable, and I think this will be the same. So you might you might lose an amount of vitality damage depending on the affixes that you can get, um, but you'll gain the third totem, which will actually make the build move, um, give it a bit more momentum. I think. So all in all, I, I like the changes. Um, if you guys don't add any more damage to it, uh, if you just leave it the way it is. I think it can still be, you can work with that, people can build, can make some good builds out of that, and um, I'm enjoying it, still good totem build, still got a pretty good feel to it, and um, different, it's a, different enough from my Path of Exile arc totem build, so that it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really feel like the same thing, it's, I don't know, I think it's good. There's a different pacing, there's a completely different pacing to the gameplay, even though the gameplay is similar, um, you've got a completely different pacing, so that's, that's pretty cool. I'll leave it there.